SoundHound has just acquired Amelia AI for $80 million. But what's interesting is Amelia AI itself has already raised more money than that. They've raised at least $189 million, um, including a $175 million investment in March of last year from Build Group. So this is really interesting. I think a lot of people right now are talking about kind of like AI and it kind of an investment bubble that we may have been in. Um, this is a very interesting, you know, case because SoundHound in this acquisition, this is all cash. So $80 million of cash for the company. Um, and I think actually there is some an equity component to this as well. Um, but in any case, cash and equity, $80 million. And that's for a company that's raised pretty much $190 million. So that's over $110 million that is, you know, getting wiped out um, in literal cash. And the crazy thing is for Amelia, you know, when they raised that $190 million, um, their valuation was much, much higher. So, you know, the valuation literally going down to $80 million is, I would say, very, very significant as far as um, yeah, kind of an indicator of where the where the the market isn't and maybe just on where kind of Amelia is at. So what are they getting? What does Amelia do? For those that don't know, SoundHound is an interesting company. They're essentially uh, an AI company. They kind of specialize in voice interface technology. So pretty much their big focus is on creating voice enabled AI solutions. And they, they do this in a bunch of different industries. You can kind of imagine them, I think, like Eleven Labs or some of these other voice um, audio companies. Now, what's interesting to me, I think this whole industry is really ripe for disruption. If you've seen any of the demos of OpenAI's new voice assistant, it's absolutely insane. I was just watching it, some demos on um, X today where someone was saying, okay, pretend that you're like doing a jogging class and you're like, you're, you're like a, a running instructor and you're instructing people, but you're like really out of breath. And like, it was like, <gasps> okay, so what we're going to do uh, is everyone and like it was so crazy it's not just words it's like trained on and it was like okay be happier be like talk faster like have a lower voice like it is just insane how versatile that tool is and so i think soundhound and a lot of these other companies um will definitely get a run for their money I'm trying to compete just with open ai there and we'll probably see others and, and i'm sure they'll come out with some things too but I think the way that SoundHound really competes in an era where you have like 11 labs with insane uh, voice assistant voices that are really, really realistic and OpenAI that's coming out with this insane new voice tool um, is that they really focus on specific verticals. So like one of the big things they do is automotive integrations. Um, pretty much they're helping car companies do like power their in-car voice assistants. And it's like a very specific thing. They go and make the specific deals with these companies and they're like a very, a lot of very, you know, specific like requirements and how it works, APIs, how everything ties in, probably having models run on the, you know, on the, uh, act in the actual car. I don't know. So it seems like they've kind of, um, nailed down a bunch of different things. Uh, they do, yeah, essentially these voice assistants and then cars are kind of their big thing. Now, what I think they want to do with this acquisition is expand into a bunch of new things. This is kind of the reason why I believe they acquired Amelia. So um, essentially, it's going to help them get into financial services, insurance, healthcare, retail, hospitality. They don't have a huge business in those areas, but Amelia has been focusing on it. What's interesting is that SoundHound's market cap uh, is up to about $300 million as of January last year. Um, that's what it was in January last year. And now it's moved up to about $1.4 billion right now, 2024. So it has had a really big, a very significant jump as far as the company goes. Um, apparently, they're expected to report losses in their quarterly results. So it's not quite a profitable company yet. Um, but they're seeing, you know, massive raise in, in um, the market cap and this company is doing quite well and especially like honestly i think this is a this is a very smart move um pulling in these acquisitions of companies that raised a ton of money like the thing with all that money is like it was spent somewhere a lot of it was probably on um a lot of it was probably on product development but also amelia has a lot of it has a lot of um connections 
So essentially in like a lot of very regulated industries like insurance and financial services. Now, this is a, a big accelerant, um, they're saying. So I think their CEO, SoundHound's co-founder and CEO, um, Kvan said, some of their customers are highly regulated and as such, those integration requirements are significant and complex. Incubating these types of relationships and developing the associated product capabilities would take us years. So this is an accelerant for us. And then he said, we're, we are excited to have been able to acquire Amelia at a price that made sense for both of our organizations. Ouch. Yeah, sure. It made sense for uh, SoundHound. I'm sure Amelia would have loved to and their investors would have loved for it to have been anywhere close to the valuation they raised, you know, 100 million plus dollars at. But, you know, it is what it is. So obviously, I think this is a this is a really awesome move. Sometimes these companies just aren't profitable. Amelia just isn't profitable, isn't cutting it, but it has obviously some great assets and it is a good business. And I guess their investors probably would rather get something than nothing um, or have them burn all the money. So it made sense to sell to SoundHound. But I think this is also awesome for SoundHound. Obviously, this is a great move because this was a company that was given $190 million and they're able to buy it for $80 million. So they pretty much just like, it, it's like they're taking, I mean, of course, maybe the money wasn't spent super efficiently. Maybe it was, I don't know. But my assumption is like they're, they're, you're getting a very good deal here. And a lot of that money would have been spent on product development. And what it seems like um, is it was spent on relationship development and kind of integrating with very, um, you know, very regulated industries, very complex stuff. It all got figured out. They're just coming and scooping up the company with everything built in and they're getting at a huge discount. So, I mean, massive kudos to SoundHound for putting this deal together and pulling it through. And I'm sure Amelia... I mean, it sounds like the company just wasn't able to hack it on its own. And so this was, you know, kind of their best bet um, to to kind of join the team. So probably good for everyone involved. Not great for the investors of Amelia, um, but definitely great for the investors of SoundHound. So part of the deal that I do think is interested, um, because right now, as far as like how much money they're actually making, both of them together are expected to make about $150 million in revenue by next year. So $45 million of that is going to be coming from Amelia's existing businesses. What's so interesting to me is this is a company that was sold for $80 million, but they're forecasting that next year it's going to make $45 million. I'm not really sure what's going on, but to me that that doesn't make a ton of sense. You know, tech companies are definitely sold usually at multiples, especially ones that have raised so much money. So I'm not 100% sure why they would sell for $80 million if they're expecting to make you know, 50% of that next year, more than 50% of that next year. So like what they're selling for less than a 2x multiple of their, but I guess that is you know projected revenue. So maybe their projections are really big and we don't know exactly what it's going to be. Anyways, very interesting deal. So part of this though is a debt assumption. Um, so SoundHound is going to assume Amelia's debt uh, which is the uh, apparently, I don't know the exact debt that Amelia had, but apparently combined, both companies are going to have about $160 million in cash and about $40 million in debt. So um, SoundHound definitely has uh, quite a lot of cash. They can, they can pull off a deal like this, um, and that's an extra $40 million in debt. Now, if all of that debt came from Amelia, then maybe that would make more sense because assuming 40 million in debt and paying an 80 million dollars in cash is more like 120 million dollars um maybe their debt was getting so big and they were unable to pay it right maybe amelia had spent all their money they had 40 million in debt and they just needed to get sold so they're like regardless of how much money we've raised we got to sell because we can't pay our debt that's actually in my opinion that's probably the most likely situation with amelia why they sold such a uh, such a cheap a discount, which really does raise the question of why they took on the debt. I guess they probably felt like they had to or they needed to, but if they couldn't raise money, taking on the debt definitely would put them in a bad position. Spend all your money and have a bunch of debt is kind of a bad position because if they're expected to make $45 million next year, um, then it seems like a bad idea to have gotten into a lot of debt uh, because $45 million next year, if they if they were able to just ride it out, and not get you know not get uh, consolidated with SoundHound, they probably could have. Um, they probably could have ridden it out and had a way higher valuation in the next like let's say three years if they were able to actually hit their benchmarks. So, 
guess this is could be a this, this story could be like a a story of the woes of venture debt that being said maybe they won't be able to reach the point where they're going to make 45 million next year without the debt so anyways complicated situation another interesting quote from the ceo of soundhound in regards to all of this he said we have a shared belief in our combined upside potential amelia has built an amazing product portfolio and has a tremendous customer base there are some who speculate um we're seeing well yeah anyways he kind of talks about the the investment bubble and kind of where that's going um he says that you know over investment in company building foundational models might be something that we're seeing he says foundation models are just the beginning we believe there will be a long lasting wave of value creation for companies that build and scale businesses around ai and that's exactly what we're doing here we've built an amazing portfolio and we're scaling in production of our conversational and generative ai solutions with innovation and effective management of hallucination risks. So I think this is really interesting. I'm excited to see what comes out of this. Um, I obviously would love there to be way more um, way more competitors in the field. I love Eleven Labs. I think they're amazing as far as voice goes. They've been the leader, and it seems like OpenAI is about to completely kick everyone's butt with their new voice model that is actually able to have like customized voice sounds right like be happier be sadder sing act like you're out of breath like it's absolutely insane how versatile OpenAI's new voice model is i think that they're going to kick everyone's butt for a minute um but again they're sitting they've been sitting on this for many many months just showing some demos so i think it could give companies like 11 labs the time to actually go and, and come out with competing things um because opening eyes like a little slow when they're trying to you know get all their safety stuff really dialed in so anyways i think this is very very interesting um and perhaps we'll see someone like soundhound kind of come and, and compete especially once they start you know they're making a decent amount of revenue and they have very uh clear verticals outlined that are kind of niche so very interesting and i'll definitely keep you up to date on this company in the future if you enjoyed the episode it would mean the world to me if you could leave a review on the podcast um, over on Spotify, you go over to the about page and uh, you hit the stars and on Apple, um, you just leave a review. I read them all. I really do appreciate them. Um, I make these uh, for you guys because I love you. Um, and if you appreciate them, I would really appreciate a review. So hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you next time.